So I'm playing the first practice round now. I'm planning on playing 18 holes, so I took a golf cart. I'm playing a few of my friends, but they are walking, so they are far behind. But yeah, I'm going to play 18 holes, so that's why I took a cart and plan to see the course today and then probably play 9 the following 2 days. So far, this course is definitely a lot different from the previous one. Like, if you guys can see, there are actually trees that have leaves on them. And um, the conditions are a little bit different. The putting green is, I feel like, a little bit slower. And it feels like you can be more aggressive with your short game here. So, and the bunkers actually have sand. So obviously during practice rounds, one of the things I focus on is short game. Just seeing the types of shots that are best suited for the course. And also like basically if you hit it to certain areas, what kind of short game shots you need to hit. So you know, if there's a shot where you go and you're just like, okay, this is an impossible shot if it's to this pin, you know that that's one place that you definitely do not want to go. But also in addition to that, other than short game, what I do is also see things like bunkers and hazards and stuff like that. What is going to reach them, whether it's worth it to hit it if it's going to reach them and whether it's better to just hit something shorter and sometimes what I like to do as well is put myself in the bunkers and see that you know if I am in the bunker am I able to play out of it if it's an easy bunker then it might even though it is a bunker it might be a good bunker to be in so sometimes I put myself in different scenarios just to see what the outcome would be if I were to hit there So another reason why I like to do things such as, you know, hit out of bunkers and stuff like that when I get the chance in a practice round is because sometimes you're afraid of something because you don't know what is going to happen if you get into it. Whereas when you go into it and you really know you can get out of it, there's no point being afraid of it. So then you're just able to focus on, you know, instead of trying to avoid the bunker, you're able to focus on going onto the fairway or doing whatever you need to do because there's nothing wrong with going into the bunker. You know that if you go into the bunker, you can get out of it. So then you're able to focus on what you should be focusing on and what you need to be focusing on versus being scared of, you know, going to the bunker or something like that. So as you can see there, my driver, I didn't hit it very good, but it's about 20 yards from the hazard and past that, it actually goes downhill, so you don't want to hit it past that. So because I had time there, I had time to hit both a driver and a 3-wood, and I think I'm going to be going with the 3-wood, because as you can see, like it wasn't that much dis difference in distance, and there's no point playing with the hazard here, and this is also a par 5. 
So I think it's really going to depend on the conditions. But if there is a headwind, I will probably hit a driver still. But if not, I will probably just be having my three wood for that hole. And you know, it's always good to have more than one plan. And you know, that's the important thing too because a plan is just a plan. Like conditions are going to change. You know, if it's windy, if it's raining, things are going to change. So. It's good to have more than one plan, but know that, you know, like for instance, I know that the three wood is a safe shot and the driver is still something that I can hit. So it, it depends on the conditions, but I know that if anything happens, the three wood will be my club that I can hit no matter what. Hey guys, so I just washed up. I'm finally in my hotel room. It has been a pretty long day with the driving and the 18 holes. I just got back from Walmart because I bought this thing and I don't know if I'm mistaken but in my last hotel I have all these like little bites and I don't know if they're bed bugs but I tried to buy this thing to just to like spray I don't know if this is the right thing to buy it says eliminates odor but it also says like um, kills 99.99% .99 of germs so and this one says it can be used on fabric because the other ones are not for fabric. So I hope it's okay for me to spray this on the bed. But yeah, I've been getting some bites and I don't know. I guess it's just the joy of living hotel to hotel. <laughs> so you can see one there, but the bad one is on my foot. See, can you see that? It's almost like a blister, like there's a bubble. I don't know if I'm wrong, I don't know if there's actually a bug in Texas that's attracted to my blood because bugs are attracted to my blood so I wouldn't be surprised but I somehow get it, I feel like I get it at night so I think it might be from the bed but yeah if I'm wrong and there's actually something biting me and I should get insect repellent instead let me know but I don't know, I've just been getting insect all over my body too, it's really itchy so let me know what it is, but either anyway, I'm going to spray this on my bed and hopefully it helps. gosh guys so i just finished my second practice round and i went to this pho place vietnamese food for lunch with a few of my friends and unbelievably enough the owner knows who i am like literally what are the chances of that happening like in wichita falls he was like he saw me standing outside and he was like there's no way this is her like why would she be here she's in malaysia and then he like came out and talked to me and he was like yeah i follow your v videos and like i have a toddler and you know every time when he wakes up in the middle of the night i watch your videos and try to put him to sleep and i was like oh my gosh my heart and he like calmed our meals so like if you guys are ever in the area or you know if you're even close by to wichita falls i 100 percent recommend going there it's called pho viet um it's really good authentic vietnamese food and yeah help support a fellow member of team jen thank you so much by the way if you're watching this video for the meal it was really good and thank you for coming and saying hi because you really made my day maybe you made my week too so i'm so thankful for all of you guys and i just want to jump on here and say that honestly i think one big takeaway from this experience so far is that social media is amazing i know a lot of people and there is a lot of downfall to social media but i feel like there is no other way that i would have been able to reach a lot of you guys and you know met a lot of you guys online and um it's just an amazing tool that i think a lot of people sure might not use it correctly but at the same time it is something that can really benefit our lives and really can change our lives so yeah i think it's quite amazing i mean i did communication in college so i knew that it was amazing but actually experiencing it is something else so yeah i'll see you guys for tomorrow's practice round it's going to be one more practice round before the event i'm going to play nine holes and then just do some practice and come back and chill and get ready for the next day 
practice day three. Finish my third practice round. I only played nine today. It is extremely cold and windy today. I'm just gonna go do like an hour of putting and call it a day and rest. So yeah. So I just finished my final practice before the round tomorrow. Like I said just now, it was a super windy and super cold day. Um, but it's good practice because it's supposed to be raining this week and it might get as windy as it was today. So it's alright. Um, one of the things that I find hard actually on the day before the tournament is really like knowing when to stop because you know it's always like oh you want to end on a good feel you want to have a good one before you finish and then it's like oh you want to do your shoeing you want to do your putting you want to do your chipping you want to do everything but to a certain point you just have to remember that whatever you do today is just to give you confidence for tomorrow you're not actually going to be able to do anything you're not going to be able to change your swing or do anything by tomorrow like that's just not that's not realistic and what you're trying to do is actually just give yourself a good feel give yourself the confidence to have a good round tomorrow and that is what i was trying to do so i'm not spending too long out here because sometimes when you are getting ready for tournaments it's not very beneficial to just like be hitting balls and like doing things for too long either because then you know you hit one bad shot and you're like oh shoot now i need to keep hitting and keep hitting so yeah like i said aim there was confidence i feel good i did some putting Got a feel of the greens today, even on the course, of course. And um, just did some short putts here, did some drills. And I'm feeling good and ready to go.